So I'm here with Renee Bird, rising singer, entrepreneur, businesswoman, and a host of a talk show. So Renee, how have you been? I've been okay, thank you. Very well. Considering the world we're living in is very different. Um, I've survived and my family are well, and I've just been trying to pivot the way I do things slightly different to the norm, because we're not in the norm, are we? At all. We're far from. Um, so firstly, thank you for reaching out. And my second question would be, how did you get started in music? Well, um, it's a bit cliche, but I come from a very musical background. Actually, Paul, pulling back a little bit further, um, I was surrounded, surrounded as a young child around the Christian gospel music. So that was my biggest influence from very young. Not that I do Christian gospel music, but that was the first kind of insight into singers, because I don't know if you know much about gospel music, it's quite powerful. So growing up in that environment, that kind of laid the foundation for me. Um, my father, he was also in the music industry, signed to a major record called RCA, the same people Elvis was on, so that type of major label. So as a child, I used to watch him on TV all the time. And you wouldn't, you would see me when I was very young at some of the open air concerts, unfortunately we don't have any more, um, with the likes of Sting and Sade, I'd be sitting on a speaker watching them perform. So music has always been around me, but little did I know years later, that I'd actually take it upon myself and do it. Wow, that is <laughs> incredible. Having a dad sign to RCA, that must have been something real fun. I can't lie. I was very young, so I'd turn on the TV and he was on all the different channels at the time. But not like how it is now, because obviously you've got like um, cable TV. But um, I was a little child seeing him on TV or seeing him doing shows, an equivalent of like Jonathan Ross or equivalent of that type of thing, Graham Norton. It would be that version back then in the 80s. Wow. So as a kid, yeah, seeing him on TV was really inspiring and I wanted to be like him. But obviously time, it took a little while. Um, my first recording, and I was quite young, was my actually late uncle, um, Le um, Linton Beckles. He's passed away, sadly, 2015. And he was a group called Central Line, which had a number one hit. And um, actually, I think Dizzy Rascal used one of the loops in one of his tracks, which is um, Walking Into Sunshine. So he set a lot of, of the mantle for a lot of open people coming as we speak now in the industry. Um, so he was the first person to give me the opportunity to, to record. My dad was in the studio at the time, but I was too nervous. And I told him to leave because I was always nervous of singing in public. And then they thought, oh my God, this voice is phenomenal. So that was my first taste of being in the music industry. But um, wow. I decided to study, get education, which was a sensible thing to do. And as I got older and life experiences, then I started to learn, learn how to write and then evolve into the artists that you see now. Oh, lovely. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what did you study? I did actually sociology wow. and elements of law. Yeah, so I, um, I'm i independent. I wasn't lucky like my father was signed to a record label, major record label. So a lot of the things that I wanted to do was self-funded or still is self-funded. So my background actually is in the corporate world. So I funded my music through the corporate industry. So they say the boardroom to stage, literally I'd be in a boardroom and then some evenings I'd be performing. So I did the two. Wow, so... What was it like doing your first live performance? If you've Nerve wracking, scary, <laughs> but also exciting because I like people. I'm got a little bit of an extrovert in me. So I'm, I enjoy being around and entertaining people from very young. Everyone used to say I was always on some sort of stage or always liked to um, entertain people and sing songs that were out at the time. But it's nerve wracking because you've got this audience looking back at you and they want you to entertain them. And you don't know if things are going to go right, wrong or indifferent and you know, it's a bit overwhelming but when you get into the groove when you get into the groove of it it almost becomes exciting and then you just let the their energy feed off of yours and then it's explosive so it was nerve-wracking but once you get into it it was fun yeah I can I could imagine that well then again I, I don't think I'd ever be able to sing but I could imagine the feeling yeah well that would not be fun anyways um you've also how have you been during lockdown like, what have you done to keep yourself productive and keep going I think um well Wow, I think I've had, I'm very grateful. I've got a good family and friends. So I think it's in this season more than ever, I broaden my horizons to make sure people who were in my life were even closer to me. So things like this, being on a Zoom, being able to communicate has been phenomenal. But um, from a music standpoint, I actually did a pre-release back in December, 2019 to release a single that I have out called Born Again, which is out right now. It's an adaptation of um, um, two artists, Sarita and Billy Preston. They did it back in the 1976. And I revamped it, brought it back to life and made it a bit more fast, more of a salsa R&B flavor. 
And I released that literally on February the 10th, 2019. And then COVID hit 23rd of March, 2019. Damn. So you can only imagine I'd done the video, the campaign, and it almost put a pause on the campaign. And I didn't know where to go because everything was about COVID. This thing was out in the air, people were dying. And I realized I couldn't make it about myself, but I still wanted the songs to hope heal hearts because it's about being positive and bringing new life and being you know, um, in love. So I wanted it to still heal hearts at that time, but I couldn't really put my energy into that because I was really conscious of how people were feeling and not to make it about myself. So um, I'm part of a production company, me and my brothers, JJ and Tesley, who's also an artist. Um, he said to me, my brother Tesley, sis, you like to talk maybe too much. Let's see if you can get a platform. Let's put something together. Who am I? Sounds great. Let's let people share their story to inspire others. So at first I was like, okay, how are we going to do that? You know, how am I going to get people? Is that like, no sis work your magic? You know, loads of people Just start with people, you know, and then let it build. And like months later, I've had everyone on that platform that is actually in the know, like Sir Patrick Hutchison, who saved the people, who's a friend wow. now. Um, I've had Chris Collins, who was um, an ex Ralph Lauren model. And he's now got a fragrance line called Chris Collins fragrance line. And the list goes on and I've got some still more exciting people to interview. So every week you never know who it's going to be because everyone has a unique story. So it's not just people in, in music. There's people that have got stories who are in industries like the healthcare or they might be entrepreneurs. So I literally said, how could I pivot what I'm doing? Not to take away music because that's my heart, my love, but let's have another thing to your bow, as they say. And it's been going really well. Like I was interviewing this week, a few people that I will be putting on the platform so yeah, Who Am I Talk is my new venture. And it was exciting to do that in this season, definitely. Yeah, it looks amazing. Like I think COVID for me as well got me to start doing this because obviously I couldn't go out and get experience in journalism or in copywriting because of COVID. And generally we had not, everything hasn't been the same. So that's why I took it upon myself to try and get interviews in. Mm. And honestly, it's, it's scary when you first have to reach out to people because it's like, you don't know who's going to respond. And then it's like, oh God, if someone sees it, <laughs> like it's a bit of awkwardness when you actually meet the people and it just feels like, and as long as you keep it casual and just gentle, the moment you start feeling good at the moment, it's just like everything just flows. And all right. So had COVID not been a thing, what do you think your career or possible business ventures you'd be doing now would look like? It's interesting. I would have hoped definitely the campaign would have taken flight much more. Um, as, as I said, a lot of the focus, even the channels, the radio play stations were still playing music, but obviously they weren't physically doing it. I got a lot of traction, quite a lot actually in the States, because States is very different to the UK where they kept open. You know, some places they did lockdown, but not a lot of places did. But I would, um, I would think I would have been performing, doing shows. Um, I tend to move more on very private gigs. I'll, not saying I'm not a commercial artist, but the places I performed are like private members clubs, things like that. So I've done lots of charity events and things like that. And um, hopefully got the single out in the, to the masses and toured around the world. That would have been fantastic if that had happened. Um, but what I will say in the music industry, you never know what's gonna happen. You never know how it's gonna impact the world, what you create. That's the potluck that goes into music. We can never predict what that song's going to do. All you do is give it your best and hopefully it touches someone's heart. But um, like equally, even though COVID did hit, I did not, not get anything happening. A lot of stuff is happening for me in the music industry. A lot of people are reaching out. I was on loads of other podcasts as well as a result. People doing write-ups about me, blogs and things like that. So even though there was COVID, I found that my visibility was much stronger because everyone was online. So where they would discover me before, they were discovering me this time. And everyone was around to listen to the shows or join the lives and things like that. So I think it's been a very good positive and as opposed to a negative. Yeah. yeah. I say COVID for a lot of people, like provided you haven't got COVID or provided you haven't lost someone to COVID. Yeah. It's generally been a time where most people have obviously struggled initially, but then had to find a different avenue. Like a lot of people who made a lot of their living off being at live events, talking to people have now had to pivot into investing into all these different avenues in order to make ends meet. And generally it's allowed them to find, find new things in themselves, which I always like hearing about. Like I've some of my favorite comedians I follow, they've mm -hmm. started in real estate businesses um, and um, fit and like fitness. And it's really cool. Like, mm -hmm. all right. And then I remember actually getting COVID for me was, um, a bit terrifying but at the same time it kind of got me to 
put a lot of things in perspective and really start like focusing on myself. I, I don't know if you're willing to share this, but in the event that you, did you get COVID or did you know anyone who got it? And how, what was it like for you? Yes, I sadly did get COVID. Um, my mother had it. Thankfully, she is in full recovery. And that was scary and terrifying because she was in the bracket of people having slightly underlying conditions that, you know, sadly people didn't make it. So oh. that really raised my stress levels to the highest level ever, as you can imagine being your mother. Um, mm. and she recovered and then sadly, then I contracted it and I'm still recovering. I've still got this lingering cough that they call COVID cough. Mm. Um, four weeks on, normally you have a cold. It doesn't last for four weeks, does it? So mm. um, it's showing that it's lingering, but the experience I didn't know. See, the story is I didn't know I had COVID and actually, duh, I didn't think it was it. For some reason in my mind, I just thought I had a cold because at the time I got it, the temperature dropped and I maybe wasn't like I had, I wear flip flops around my apartment, didn't think much of it, mm. but it was actually COVID. And if I stop and thought about all the symptoms I had was every single one of them from not being able to smell, not being able to taste, <laughs> headache, everything yeah. in my body. But it's almost like you psychologically tell yourself it's not that, even though you've been watching the news for the year and a half to say, actually, that's all we're talking about. And I think that helped me deal with the fact I had it because I was I kept going. I even did a live when I had COVID. I didn't realize I had wow. it. <laughs> and when I look back at the footage, I see my eyes were very puffy and I obviously clearly was unwell. So it's a psychological thing and a mental thing. And I think who I am is being very positive. I just kind of kept striving. Now, when I knew I had it, I got very choked and overwhelmed. I thought, oh my God, I've got this thing. And does it get worse or am I at the worst of it? So it's that fear. Um, there was a poignant moment when I did have COVID, not knowing I had it, that I felt really unwell. There was a point when I got out of my bed and said, oh gosh, what is this? Whatever this is, I don't feel well. And I, and I feel kind of a little bit vulnerable. Mm. It was just like a, a little moment of vulnerability and I got scared. And I remember speaking to my other half on the phone and I said, oh my God, I don't feel well. And he even freaked out and goes, what do you mean? What do you mean? Um, but I, I'm a woman of faith. So all I did is pray, went mm. into deep prayer. And, you know, I am here today. Not that's the only reason why <laughs> I, um, I'm here, but I took a cocktail of vitamins and medication. But the faith in me was not ready to do anything other than con continue because there's lots to be done. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness you're here. Thank goodness. Like a lot of people, like although a lot of people have died, unfortunately, it's like it's always a good thing to hear that people recovered. And not only that, but like trying to continue to be positive and keep moving. Because yeah. funnily enough, today actually, I got something through the post that I'm actually eligible for an early vaccine. So, really? yeah, like I wasn't expecting it myself. But when I saw that, I was like, wow because i was someone who has always been on the side of i don't care whenever this vaccine is going to get to me whenever i get a chance to get it i'm mm. going to get it because mm. i want my normal life back obviously because i'm a student and i want to have my fun but at the same time i just want to be able to see like my friends again and just do things that i did normally and just you know live my life again yeah no totally i find it although i understand why i do find it kind of like concerning the amount of people that are very hesitant about this vaccine like I understand it from the perspective if you look at like statistics and numbers about like how people of color have been treated by like medical staff and obviously yeah there's hesitancy because of that but for me on a personal level it's like I'd rather take this vaccine and know that I'm one that I'm personally one step closer to living my life than not take it and have to wait even longer because this government loves to change how they do things and be very flippant and that can that's obviously caused frustrations and more lockdowns than we needed <clears throat> yes and um finally excuse me <clears throat> finally um i noticed when i saw your instagram you are i i think you were part of a charity like a, the nelson mandela children's fund that's Expl correct. yeah I explain how you got into that yeah so wow Every, hopefully your audience knows Nelson Mandela. Um, they do. Any bigger than that as an icon. Yeah. Um, I've been with a charity for, gosh, over 10 years now. I'm an ambassador for the charity, so I've done performances for them. They're based in the UK and in South Africa. So it's a Nelson Mandela Children's Fund, um, headed by the CEO, executive, um, executive director, apologies, executive director, um, um, Kathy Scott, and I, that's also a friend of mine. And um, it was actually 
conceptualized and created by Nelson Mandela himself by his presidential funds. So it's actually something he created for the children of South Africa and obviously around the world in the UK he supports children. So I didn't know watching as a child, the apartheid, the movement, him as a president that I would years later be representing his charity, I had no idea. And even that alone blows my mind that his legacy is I'm part of it in some form or shape. And it's incredible because he was an incredible man. Yes, he was. Yes. And um, what like what can we expect from you in the future? Like after COVID, a year from now, a month from now, what's what can the world expect from to hear from Renee Bird? Right, more material. Get rid of this cough. <laughs> so I get in the studio. Yeah, definitely um, more material. I'm the single still circulating. I don't know if you know much about the music industry. As an independent, sometimes you can have a song is put out one year and it takes a little while to penetrate for people to get used to it. If you think of a song in your mind that you might have liked and it hit the commercial, bet your dollar it's been circulating quite nicely in the background. If it was an independent kind of release and then the majors picked it up. So Born Again is quite nicely circulating. A major plug-in company is taking it over to re-release it. Actually on the 5th of April, would you believe it, which is after Resurrection Sunday. So it tells you something, it's called Born Again. Something's yeah. going on. Um, so I'm gonna see what happens with that. Um, Who Are My Talk has definitely taken off. I've got loads of partnerships I've been building. There's a, a company that I'm in partnership with called Hera City. And basically they're a company that are basically looking after women and providing opportunities of education and work for them in India. And it's a multi-billion industry that they're working on a city they want to create in parts of the world. I think in India, Morocco and Panama. So that's something I'm involved in. And the Who Am I talk, um, how many episodes later, that seems to be taking a lot of traction. So it would be great if one of the production companies that um, I'm even speak, speaking with want to take it up and put it on a major platform. So there's lots going on, the different collaborations that I'm doing. So once we're out, it will then be an opportunity to meet up with people we've been doing Zooms with <laughs> and actually put your, the face to somebody. A lot of traveling I'm going to be doing because I spent a lot of time in the States and that was halted because of obviously COVID. So I'm going to try and build some allegiances over there and get performing again, you know, whatever that looks like. I know that they're going to be dropping restrictions. So hopefully things will go back and we can be how we was. But you can only imagine the competitiveness that's going to kick in once yeah. we can, because everybody's going for that gig, everybody's going for that audition. So it's going to be very competitive, but I think it's nice to line up my, as I say, line up my doc, my docs, my docs right now, knowing where I want to be in the next six months, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I think I've done some stuff, some great stuff while we've been in COVID. I wasn't idle. Um, there was lots that was done and it's now kind of finalizing and really finishing up things that are important to get me to the next level. All right. Well, I look forward to hearing from you in the future, be it with your charity, be it with music, blogs, anything you do, because you sound like an incredible person. Thank you. I can't wait to hear your music and more that comes to you and wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs>